Okay, so let's go over the base of the heat exchanger. Um, basically, the air is going to go in this side, go all the way around, and then up to the top. But uh, we're going to just go over the base here. This is 3x3 three three square tubing, uh, eighth inch thick. And these are inch and a half angle iron, eighth, eighth inch thick as well. Um, so all these angles are really easy. These are all 45 degree angles, so super easy to cut. I just used a miter saw with um, a metal cutting uh, cutoff blade. So basically, um, the width of it is from is basically just to fit my fireplace. But uh, you could do this. You could change this from here to here is 23 and a half inches, and from here to here is 16 inches. I kind of have a smaller fireplace, but. Uh, uh, pretty basic setup. Um, I also have this this angle iron is going to be welded The angle iron is going to be welded down in there. It's going to be raised up a little bit But basically it's going to allow the fire to sit within here And as the fire burns it'll heat up this heat exchanger So as air comes in here and goes around here It's going to heat up and then it's going to go up to the upper part So let's go ahead and show you what the upper part is Okay, so here's the upper part. The air is going to go from up into here and then to here. And then I am going to weld this on, this cap here, so that the air doesn't escape through there. And I'm going to drill six holes for these six pipes. And these, heat, these six pipes will go over the fire and then come out the front of the fireplace. And then as um, I get to the end of the fireplace, I'm going to put this angle iron just to support these from bending. So basically, as the air goes through this entire system, it will be heated up um, and pushed back out into the room. Right now, my fireplace uh, doesn't really heat up anything. It just sucks the heat out of my house. So, Okay, so that's the overview of how I uh, basically put everything together, um, just dry fit everything, cut it, and just hoping that uh, this idea will work. Um, I've seen a couple of different uh, examples of this through YouTube and online. Uh, people sell them on eBay for like $600 to $1,000. just way too expensive when you can kind of do it yourself. So here's the overview from the top and the bottom. And uh, let's go ahead and start welding. Okay, so I apologize for the light, but uh, yeah, my garage doesn't have much of the lighting. So I got everything sealed up here. Uh, I'm actually pretty surprised, it turned out pretty good. Um, I do need to grind off and clean up some of the welds. And I still need to put the grates in for the firewood to sit on. Okay, so I just wanted to do a video of the noise level of the fan and how it is adjustable. So I have a PWM controller. So I can adjust the fan levels to any amount that I want. It's not horribly loud, you just have to turn the TV up to uh, get over the noise over and pan over to the fire. Okay, so get sucked through the fan, push through here, 
along the back, up through, and then through these tubes. It's uh, really hard for me to sit here. It's extremely hot. Let's check the temperature. Two hundred and fifteen degree air coming out of there. So guys, thanks for watching the video so far. Just wanted to make a few points at the end of the video just to clarify some things. Um, first off, this actually did heat my room compared to my old fireplace that didn't do anything. This actually went from 68 degrees to 72 degrees in my large living room with vaulted ceilings. So performance-wise, it actually works. Um, things I would change, um, these heat heat pipes along the top, I would definitely use a larger diameter tubing. Um, I just used what I had and that's what, you know, didn't want to spend any money. This is all metal that I had laying around. So um, I definitely would change that. I think I could get a little bit more velocity. Uh, the air could come further out into the room and definitely heat it up faster. Even though it was heating up the room, I think it could do a little bit better job. So getting a larger diameter tube there would definitely work. If someone wanted to do this same design, but, uh, you know, have a little bit better improvement. Um, also, just as a safety note, I always did have a carbon monoxide detector near this as it was running, just to make sure that uh, I wasn't having any issues with that, and it never went off. But I would recommend anybody that's burning uh, an indoor appliance of fire or anything like that would always have a carbon monoxide uh, detector around, and including a fire extinguisher somewhere in the house. Um, but anyway, thank you all for watching. Um, I'm going to put all the uh, links to the parts I use down in the description, so please check that out. If you guys have any questions about building this or any comments that uh, you might uh, have, if you're looking to build something like this, please let me know. I'll try to do the best to respond to that. Anyway, guys, I'm pretty glad that I did this project. It's the last thing I wanted to mention was now I actually have a way to heat my house in the case of an emergency or a power outage. Um, before, you know, a fireplace, basically you're just losing heat. But with this, it allows me to actually heat my home. So, and uh, the blower is a 12-volt blower, so I can run that off uh, a battery. I have a couple batteries that I can run that off of. So, anyway, you guys have a great uh, rest of the day, and thanks for watching.